Hello everyone, welcome back to the second session of management information system. That is in the previous session, I, I want to like to discuss about the previous session what we have gone through. So in the previous session, we have already discussed about the introduction of MIS, then why MIS is needed, what should be a MIS system consists of or what are the things that MIS system provide. We have studied about those six rights and next is a MIS concept, the physical view, the conceptual view, the difference between the conception, the physical view that we have discussed with respect to a pyramid kind of structure and the various definitions that are associated with the uh, subject MIS and the role of MIS which has been also discussed and the impact, the greater concept is the impact that MIS makes and also we have studied about the various users that interact with the MIS. Today we, we would like to go with the topic, start the topic with a concept called management as a control system. We have been know about the word called the importance of the management. Now, what is this control system? When you talk about the control system, it is the managerial activity of controlling the actual work or actual process with the standard process means we need to man, man, we need to compare it means the actual work is as per going with the standards. We are comparing it and we are controlling. There is a greater saying that it is better to cure or better to predict and cure before something goes wrong means action is always to be taken at the control measures itself. The first thing is always look into the slightest deviation. When you are about to get a deviation in any of the achieving goals, it is very important to correct then and there itself before it is too late because once the deviation towards achieving goal is deflected, later getting back to the normal track would be of greater difficulty or sometimes it might not be possible itself. So, this is the property where the management focuses on controlling the concepts or controlling the process with respect to the standard missions or go missions or the goals that has been set. Next one is the person called Robert. as defined the management control procedure. Let us look into those things with the help of a, help of a diagram. First one is the first entity here is with respect to management control is first establish the standards means when you wanted to control you need to know to what extent or what to control to where to control or what is the benchmark to control. So, establish the standards fix the standards or fix the optimal things where you wanted to reach. So, then you can control the remaining things because you know if you know the target then you can predict whether we are moving towards a target or whether we are moving or deviating away from the target. So, first establish the standards. Second one Once after you establish a standard, next you need to measure it. What are you measuring? You are measuring the existing one, the existing one with respect to comparing, comparing with the standard one that is represented as a rhombus that is a conditional checking. What are we checking here? We are checking. actual versus the standard. We have established a standard. Now, we measure the actual things. We obtain the what is the process going on and what is its value. So, this value is taken and it is compared with the standard. The actual value is compared with the standard that we have framed earlier as an objective. Now, if the actual value matches with the standard, then
if the actual value matches the standard value then there is no need to take any kind of action what happens if actual value is not up to the standards then if it is deviation or if you find a deviation then the corrective measures has to be taken again the whole process has to be redone once the whole process has to be redone after doing it again the it should be measured the values should be taken and again it should be compared until the standard is matched this is what the concept of management as a control system means it needs to be refining refining refine until the optimal value is reached that is the standard value is reached next next we look into the effectiveness parameters parameters that makes the management to be a effective controlling system the first one is early warning mechanism what is this early warning mechanism always a system has to be monitored continuously if there is any slight deviation it has to be reported earlier means at the early stage itself it needs to be reported because it is very easy or it is very efficient to correct at the earlier stages we say that correct make the correction before it is too late so this statement holds very good means earlier warning has to be given so that the corrective measures can be taken up immediately the second factor is always fix the standards always aim high means you need to fix the standards keep on monitoring the things whether we are reaching towards the standards means if you look into the graph the graph should be always in the upright not a downfall graph means you need to fix the standards because if you fix the standards you can monitor those things third one when you wanted to control even you need to have a strategy this strategy of controlling the things very key it's a very key concept it, it doesn't come handy it this kind of controlling strategy would be achieved over a period of time by gaining lot of exposure and with a lot of experience so you need to frame lot of strategies to reach the goal when you say about this is my goal for the next few years or in next 5 years or 4 years the organization should be here or the pro process has to go here it is not so easy just by doing the work we need to do a strategy fixed up to achieve those goals goals so here itself fix the strategies next is a feedback how can you start comparing your actual things we need to take the feedback regularly regular feedback helps us to understand the situation of the processes in the organization take the frequent feedbacks and look into it whether the status is in the right position or not this is important how what what is the time period of the free feedback it should be accurate the data 
given in the feedback should be very accurate. It is not just a random facts and figures. It should be information. I have already discussed the importance of data and information. The feedback should constitute the information, not the data. So the data, the, the information given in the feedback should be very accurate and it should be reaching in time because after the delay, it is very difficult to take the action. So feedback should be timely given. Next. Their data given in the feedback, though it might be accurate and timely, it will, should be a realistic one, not the imaginary or a predictive things. It should be the thing of what exactly happening. Realistic data should be taken for analysis. Next is the information flow. All these information should flow to the everyone in the organization, organization because they need to keep track. They need to know what's exactly happening in the things so they can assess where the things are going wrong or where the things are achieved very properly. If there is any wrong things, they can immediately correct. If there is any good thing, they can incorporate it to achieve the goals at the very early stages. And finally, exception principles. When you talk about exceptions, we cannot say that the system will be always right. There would be a sudden errors protrude or introduced into the system. There might be exceptional cases. The management needs to be ready in those cases to control it in an effective manner so that it do not spread and destroy the whole system. If the sudden measures has to be taken, one more thing is the precautionary measures or strategies needs to be fixed before the intrusion, intrusion of an error itself. Fixing of these things takes a lot of time. So if you have a predetermined strategies, these exception can be handled very in a very effic efficient way. Next. Next is, one, uh, next is one of the key concept, what we say is next key concept that we are about to discuss is MIS is a support to management. How do we say? Our MIS is very much supporting to our management. The few things, when we talk about MIS, the other word for MIS is a decision making. Means MIS system provides information. With the help of information, one could make a decision. MIS helps to make decision in an organization in six major aspects. What are those six major aspects? First is planning. I call it as one. Next is organization. The first is a planning, second is organization, third is a staffing. Fourth is directing. And the fifth is coordinating. And sixth one is controlling. Now let us go one by one in detail. Planning. <clears throat> when we talk about the planning, there are a lot of resources, lot of ideas and lot of concepts prevailing. So the manager or the management has to decide to choose the best among the resources, best among the targets and best goal setting has to be done first. So MIS helps to make the, the process of planning in a very efficient and a beautiful way. Second one is organization. When you talk about an organization, it constitutes of many things 
tools, technology, people, resources, and also the environmental factors. So all these things has to combine together to form one organization. Not an individual concept forms an organization. Combination of many things helps to frame an organization. MIS helps to suggest or MIS helps to choose those various elements, the better elements or the best element to form a one complete organization. Next is a staffing. Staffing is a key concept of any organization. The manpower, MIS provides the right information and right kind of knowledgeful, resourceful persons information to recruit and adopt them or depute them into particular nature of work because right staffing provides an efficient output. And sixth one is directing because many of the people starts working but they just work hard, they would be not focused. So MIS provides various tools for directing or making everyone or everything in an organization to be focused on their goals. And next is coordinating. When it comes to coordination, there are various tools and technologies, hardware and software to coordinate with one another with respect to production. In the other way, there would be a lot of people which come, be people they come from various places, various cultural background, various knowledge, various language and Inter interacting with, the, with one another becomes a problem. So MIS helps them to coordinate one another. How does MIS help to coordinate? Because it provides information sharing and also provide from where to where to be shared and whom is, who is sharing with whom. All these benefits helps in coordinating not only with organization, with the people, one another. Next is controlling. So when everything is on the process, it needs to be always controlled. Because if the concept of controlling is not done, again, the whole process goes into vain. The deviation happens. Up, uh, that means that uh, the process goes uh, apart from the original track. So controlling has to be done. So MIS supports all these six activity, activity that is planning, organization, staffing, directing, coordinating and controlling activities. There is one beautiful diagram that represents this support that is MIS is a support for the management. Why I am using this concept a lot is this is one of the important question that would be asked in many of the exams for more than 10 marks. Let us look into the diagram. The first thing is the management. Management interact with the environment. When we say about environment, it is the outside world. It takes lot of inputs from the outside world and after taking lot of input, input from the outside world, management it is able to set the goals. Once the goals are set, action has to be taken in order to achieve the goals. So, what are the different aspects they make the, the management needs to do an access uh, uh, decisions or the action is the first one the first pillar we call it as p that is planning the second pillar is o i am representing in short p o and all these things students you can represent in a whole word p is for planning the so second o is for organizing and yeah, next pillar is staffing and the next pillar is directing, coordinating and controlling. So when manager management interacts with the environment and sets a goal, it has six aspects to make decisions. This is six aspects is a major role. So um, uh, management needs to think about all these aspects. So do, to do, do all these aspects, MIS uh, 
MIS has a complete details of all these. So MIS provides this information. This information caters the required need of information to all the aspects. So the goal set by the management about the planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, is controlling is supported by MIS by providing the information. This is also called the six pillar support of MIS to the management. Next, con next concept we are dealing with is management effectiveness. How management is very much effectiveness, effective in making its activities. So, Professor Nagandi Istafan, a person uh, who, is a, who is said to be the philosopher with respect to the information system, provided few aspects where the effectiveness is measured. First one is the management philosophy. The second one is environmental factors. And the third one is the various practices followed by the management. The fourth one is enterprise effectiveness. These four concepts can be justified with the diagram. I have labeled the blocks as 1, 2, 3 and 4. The first block is the management philosophy. When we talk about management philosophy, it is the concept that we look into that. What is that we are looking into it is the rules, the principles or the concepts that have been used by the management in dealing with respect to the organization. It also constitutes of, uh, constitutes of various f uh, uh, policies with respect to employees, stakeholders and also with respect to trade and etc. That is the management philosophy. What is the second one? Second one is an envir environmental fa factors. So environmental factors is not in the human hand. It is left to the outer outside world. It is like the social economical status, legal issues, policies of the government and other things come under here. So what these two all together they combine and they would have the new thing that is management practices. When the management philosophy change, the practices of management changes. When the environmental factors change, again the management practices change. So these both have an effect. These two parameters affect the management practices. Again, I would like to say environmental changes sometimes directly affect the 
management effectiveness something like now we have a new education policies that needs to be understood that's a new external thing that has been prevailed from the government so it has an impact on the effectiveness whatever the things are happening happening so far it is to be upgraded or justified with a new concept and next and fourth one is the enterprise effectiveness these two again are directly have an effect on these things sometimes when we talk about the these two concepts that is a management philosophy and environmental effects that directly with respect to enterprise effectiveness means the effectiveness of the enterprise is totally declined when the enterprise effectiveness is declined it has direct impact with respect to effective happenings of the management and these are the few concepts that i would like to have discussion to with this session let us summarize the uh, topics what we have studied in this session completely in the previous session we have studied lot more things while summarizing this first we studied about the management control system here we concentrated on the what is a control system why do we need to control the things what happens if we don't control and what are the different methods of controlling and how does a management control in an effective way those concepts have been clarified and next we have discussed about the effective control features so we have discussed about eight control features the first one is early warning mechanism the second one is the performance standards where we set the standards and the next is a strategic control strategic control is not a easiest thing which can be achieved over a period of time through experience and the fourth one is a feedback and we discussed why is a feedback is very much necessary next we have discussed about the importance of feedback with respect to accuracy accurate feedback has to be taken and those feedback has to be very much in time and next not just feedback taking is important we have also discussed about the realistic nature of the feedback and after that we have discussed about the information flow uh, where the information has to flow completely to make the things effective and finally the exceptional controlling those things was discussed in this factors next mis is a support to management obviously this is the very key part where most of them say you studied mis how does mi support to the management everyone would question about this part when examination i am repeating it this question is a mandatory question you can focus on this question so that it would be it has appeared in most of almost all the papers so we have discussed about the six parameters that mis supports for the management to make a decision what are those six parameters first one is planning second one is the organizing organization third one is staffing fourth one is directing and fifth one is co coordinating and finally controlling we have sh shown that we have discussed through a beautiful figure where top management decides and set the goal and it has six decisions to be made where mis provides information so these six pillars are supported by the mis where management comes in high from top down of approach whereas mis supports from bottom up approach ultimately the goal is reached of those six pillars that is the concept of mis as a support to the management and finally we have discussed about the effectiveness when we talk about the effectiveness there are four factors that is that's been defined by nagandi the professor nagandi the first factor is the management philosophy the second factor is environmental factor third one is management practices and finally the enterprise effectiveness means we have discussed all this thing represented through a diagram this also been asked in twice or thrice in many of the papers for 7 to 8 marks it, they have defined, defined clearly explain the effectiveness of a management representing a suitable diagram in detail so you can expect this and this mandatory in most of the question paper so i would like to conclude this session here so thank you very much